Hey, it's Professor Dave. Let's learn some algebraic properties. He knows a lot about all kinds of stuff. Professor Dave explains. Remember when we learned about a few different mathematical properties and how they pertained to numbers? Let's learn how they will be important in algebra when manipulating variables. The most important of these properties will be the distributive property. This told us how a number could be distributed across a parenthetical sum or difference. This didn't matter too much for arithmetic because 4 times the quantity of 2 plus 3 is certainly equal to 4 times 2 plus 4 times 3. But there was nothing stopping us from adding 2 and 3 first and then multiplying by 4. We should get 20 no matter which method we choose. But with algebra, there are variables that must remain as they are and can't be combined with numbers. So if we have 4 times the quantity of 2x plus 3, the only other meaningful way to express this is by distributing the 4 across the sum. That will give us 4 times 2x plus 4 times 3, which will simplify to 8x plus 12. In algebra, we will want to be able to use the distributive property this way. And we will even want to be able to do it in reverse by removing some common factor from a sum or difference. For example, if we have 3x squared plus 6x, another way to express this would involve identifying the greatest common factor of these terms and factoring it out of the expression. In this case, we can rewrite these as 3 times x times x and 2 times 3 times x. Taking everything we find in both terms, the greatest common factor would be 3x. And if we pull a 3x out of both terms, meaning we are dividing each term by 3x, we end up with the 3x out here and then x plus 2 in parentheses. We can verify that this worked as expected by then distributing the 3x across the sum. 3x times x is 3x squared and 3x times 2 is 6x. So we can use the distributive property in a variety of ways to generate equivalent expressions. Other properties that also apply include the commutative property for addition and multiplication. 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2, and 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. If these become algebraic terms, the commutative property applies in precisely the same way. The order in which we add or multiply algebraic terms is irrelevant. 2x plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2x, and 2x times 3 is the same as 3 times 2x. However, let's recall that the commutative property does not apply to subtraction or division, and that will be the case in algebra as well. We also learned about the associative property, and that will apply in algebra too, which we will find out later when we have to manipulate equations with lots of terms in them. Changing the way these are grouped will not matter if we are doing addition or multiplication. To be thorough, let's also mention some pretty intuitive properties, like the additive identity property. This says that you can add or subtract zero to any number or algebraic term, and it will retain its identity. 5 plus 0 is 5. 3x minus 0 is 3x. Seems obvious, but it will come in handy. The multiplicative identity property works the same way, except with the number 1 instead of 0. Any number or algebraic term times 1 will give you the same term again. 4x times 1 is 4x. And lastly, the inverse property of addition says that anything plus its additive inverse equals 0. So x plus negative x equals 0. And the inverse property of multiplication says that anything times its multiplicative inverse equals 1. So x times 1 over x equals 1. That's pretty much all we need to know in terms of number properties for algebra. So let's get to some equations. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.